uh, you were, if, uh, um, 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 Welcome to the show. I am that Chris Gore. This is Pod Crash. This is the show where you get to hear a different podcast every week where I appear as a guest. You get to discover new shows. I get to talk about a variety of topics. This is our very special two part train wrecks of 2012 episode of Pod Crash. This may end up being an annual event, uh, an event where we do a podcast where we play clips from shows where something went wrong, something went awry, something was off. Uh, and and, and it's the, the, the result is, well, the result is actually entertaining for you. I'm actually joined also by the producer of Pod Crash, Sean Merrick. Yes. Sean is here with me because he, he has, he's actually the best person to explain why some of these shows went wrong. Some of it was like there were au- the audio issues. Like I, we have a thing like where I always prefer to do podcasts in person. Because it, it sounds way better. I don't, I, I, I. I can't tell you how much it better sounds just with this machine, the, the, the Zoom that we use. What's the matter, though? You're not like me on Skype. Here I am on Skype. Oh, wait, you just dropped out. Oh, I just missed everything yeah, exactly. you just said. Yeah. Exactly. And that's happened before. It's like, I, to me, like, well, yeah, I don't want to limit the podcasts that I do just because they're in Canada or there's some other part of the world or some other part of the country, for that matter. But, like, uh, you know, just in person is just way better. So whenever I travel for any reason, I always try to do a podcast in that town. So, uh, well, that's uh, what that the, the, the gear is there. So we, if you, if we, if Chris Gore's gonna be in your town, we will get you on. If I am traveling, if I am, if you see me at a Ralph's and you have your recording equipment, Ralph's is a supermarket in the LA area, and and you have your recording equipment, I could end up being on your podcast. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it could happen. So, so these, this is, I, and and the thing is this. we don't want to necessarily say anything disparaging about the podcast. A lot of the reason that they go wrong is is because of me. Let's be honest. Well, that and, I mean, just, you know, circumstances. Wait a sec. You agree with what I just said? It's because of me? Yeah. Is that why they go wrong? Well, that well, the, that, and also <laughs> the circumstances and things that, like, you know, are beyond our control or just, it's just weird, you know, in the way that, you know, it's like, okay, you know, maybe we didn't get enough content. Maybe the content didn't fit enough for us to do. Because there's a certain science that when we do this show. First it, of all, I should explain, like, what you do as a producer. Because when you hear the word producer, Anyone can be a producer. For example, yeah. I produce saliva. I produce saliva. I produce uh, feces and urine. Anyone is a producer. But a producer of a podcast, which is, is it's a different job depending on what podcast. What, what you do is everything from booking me on shows. So you'll make, unless it's someone that I know, and I do know a bunch of people in the podcast world, mm-hmm. you know, friends in, that are in comedy or film or whatnot. But you get me on like the the bizarre shows and 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 look for the ones it's my job to be like hey chris gore wants to do your blankety podcast which is first of all i love that sometimes you're lying when you say that because maybe i don't love depending on what it is maybe i maybe i'm maybe i don't want to do that podcast but you'll force me to do it yeah i'll I'll, i I, there there are some topics (laughs) that we're i am pursuing that we eventually will find a way to get you on if you can get me on a farming podcast with wrestlers that will be we actually are talking about doing a far a podcast about farming yeah that was something i I don't know how this will be in the future this will be later in 2013 if you have a farming podcast and you want chris on you should tell me the it, yes, because we are pursuing one, but um, but it's also you book me on the show, then you you'll get get the audio, you'll edit the clips, then I record my own wraparounds, and then I'll edit the show and post right. it. So we kind of like you do the pre-edit of the show, and then I do the post-edit of the show, and so we it's, it's shared. Dudes. It's like a big, basically, it's a big soup that I put together, and I send Chris all the ingredients, and then you just put it all together and put it up there, and that's what everybody gets to hear. Like like hamburger helper, which I actually it's it's like a hamburger helper. You provide me with here's the box and the very simple instructions and then but then I have to make it but I have to say honestly I actually had hamburger helper recently because I saw it in the store I'm like you know I have not had that since I was a kid it was awful it was the it was disgusting (laughs) 
My memory of Hamburger Helper as a kid was definitely better than what it tasted like, which actually means just by saying this now, we will never have Hamburger Helper as a sponsor of Pod Crash, which is Betty. I mean, there are other better Betty Crocker products, but I'm thinking Betty Crocker in general will never be a sponsor of Pod Crash. All right, speaking speaking of, uh, of sponsorship and plugs, I have only one thing to plug. I uh, maybe two things. Uh, first thing, I will be at SF Sketch Fest in San Francisco, California. I'll be doing uh, stand up and hosting a show on February seventh. Uh, you can you can go to sfsketchfest.com. Uh, you can also follow their Twitter. Okay, so I'm doing that. Also. On Saturday, January 12th, um, at I.O. West in Hollywood, at 6366 Hollywood Boulevard, I will be doing Pod Crash Live, and we're talking Star Wars 7 speculation. It's Star. It's a Star Wars 7 smackdown. We're talking about everything related to the next Star Wars movie, uh, which is, they're, they're making, of course, Sean, you know about this, they're making a new trilogy of Star Wars films, heard, yes. which I had to pull over my car when someone told me. I was so excited when I heard this, because I'm not so big a fan of the prequels. There's, like, good and bad stuff in it, but Star Wars Episode 7, just the thought of that happening, I'm super excited about. So we're doing a special pod crash where we're inviting seven people from the world of podcasts. We mm. can't say who the names are yet, but it'll be seven people talking Star Wars 7, and it's going to be a smackdown of speculation. Does that? I'm going to come up with a better name for the show, but it's um, starting at 7.30, we're going to do a blue milk tasting. Ooh. This is true. 7.30 p.m., blue milk tasting, and then at 8 p.m. is the show, and then later that night is Comic Book Live is going to do, um, at 11.30 p.m., a Star Wars Episode 7. We're going to do improv, an improv version of Star Wars Episode 7. I would enjoy it if iOS has drink specials and they serve them. Oh, there's, no, we're going to do, Wars, okay, but, but it's going to be like a black Russian, but with blue, it's going to be blue. I want blue them to di- serve it in the cups like they did in the Mose Eisley, like in those, we, just, I remember just being like these weird, like, I think you're going to have to bring your own cup. I think you're going to have to bring your own cup. But so there's two things that night, and then also there's Super Bar, which Super Bar is where everybody dresses in costume. It's, it's basically they turn iOS into a cosplay bar. Yeah, and that was there last weekend, because uh, we just, we, Recently. We did, we did, yeah, it was like we did the Batman holiday special, and it was packed with people dressed up. There's photos. If you go to yeah. Facebook, um, you can look up Super Bar. You can also look up Comic Book Live. But um, just to give you the details, it's Saturday, January 12th. If you wear a costume, it's two-for-one tickets. So it ends up being like five bucks, and you get into all the shows all night. So if you come to Pod Crash, stay, drink, and then go see the uh, Comic Book Live uh, Episode 7 uh, improv show. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And I, I am in the show. I'm not going to say... I'm I'm not going to reveal what character I'm playing in the show, but an integral part <laughs> or, or an exciting new character in the Star Wars universe. But it's, it's really cool because we're bringing together kind of a Jedi council of people that are very passionate about Star Wars, all from different podcasts together, and we're just talking everything about the new trilogy, what information is leaked, um, w- what we know about it so far, and our speculation about what will happen. Yeah. No, Anyways, uh, you can go to ioimprov.com slash west and uh, you, you, can, you can pick up your tickets Saturday, January 12th, 8 p.m. Okay, 7.30 p.m., blue milk tasting. All right, let's get, to, get, get back to the train wrecks. This is so funny because there have been some actually episodes of the show where, like, I kind of feel like we had some episodes that were train wrecks. Like, I'm speaking, of course, of Sour, Tower of Sour. That was, that, just, that was like a thing that it, it's it definitely somewhat derailed um, it, during during it, but but it ended up being such a fun episode, and I love those guys. Like now, it's like I, I, you know, like l- l- looking back, that ended up being a lot of fun. Yeah, no, there's uh, there's a lot of there's a few shows that were like iffy, but we were able to. Oh, you can know. I talk about the live show for a second? The other thing is, if you go to youtubecom slash TV, we live stream the shows from iOS. So if you're listening to this podcast, going great, Gore, you're doing another show in Los Angeles live. Blah, lame. Um, you don't have to be in LA to come. To, if you, you can't make it to the show, or if you're in LA and let's say you're sick, you 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 know you can't make it. You're bedridden that night. Go to YouTube, go to youtube.com slash podcrash TV. We turn on the Google Hangouts and you can actually watch the show and chat with other people watching the show live, both Podcrash and Comic Book Live. So 
I just want to throw in, it's kind of a plug, but it's also like for people, because I, I feel bad, like some people have asked, like when is Pod Crash or when will I be coming and doing stand-up, uh, you know, and I'm going to be actually traveling next year. It'll be in the middle of the year. I'm going to be doing this, I'm, I can't talk about it now, but I am going to be doing some traveling, mm-hmm. and we'll be doing Pod Crash in other cities other than Los Angeles. Yeah, no, the, the, we've got awesome. some, We've got some coming up. Oh, we've done some stuff at like uh, Dragon Con in Atlanta. In San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, no, and we've got, and we're hoping to just be all over the place next year. Ma- more, they're going to be more live shows, but but I O is kind of my home for the show, uh, for the moment. So so uh, that's a lot of fun. Okay, so train wrecks of 2012. Let's yes. talk about. Let's talk about. This is like multiple. This is the multiple orgasm of cr- pod crashes because we're we're how many shows are we p- playing clips from? We have uh, I have like thirteen clips. Thirteen clips from different shows. Well, so but there's and there's a big chunk of it from the San Diego Comic Con show that we have. Never oh, that's aired. right. We never aired that show because the audio we only got sort of partial audio on it. It was it was a questionable but, show, but we'll, we're but there are video it. clips actually on YouTube. Okay, so let's get back to this. So so these are shows that just didn't live. It just I mean there's like certain things where it's like there were a couple of episodes we almost didn't air because the audio quality. I mean the audio right. and the audio quality just because the nature of the show is going to vary anyways because And that's always and that's the biggest danger so I'd be honest like when you're doing for for if you're a podcast and you want you I mean audio quality is such an important thing and for us I mean because we're counting We're stalling. This is like the boring part of the beginning of the award show before they give the first award. We should just get right to the first clip. Yeah, we can talk about all this. Yeah. Stuff. Let's get right to the first clip. Okay, so this clip is actually from the post game report, uh, which is hosted by Robert Workman. Right. And he's he he's I love hanging out with that guy. He's a guy from the gaming community that every time I were run into him, he's a guy I like to hang out with. Um, he's he's definitely he 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 looks like a bear. He looks like a bear, a big teddy he's bear. He's a giant man. He's a giant man. And um, I happen to be at an E3 party, and he's like, hey, let's let's uh, you know be on my podcast so I was on the show but I was only on about how many I was on like about 10 minutes of the show 5-10 minutes the, the clip that he aired was he only, had to use he had to use my iPhone to record this oh is that I just, yeah, that's I what happened I you didn't know that the, all I know is that he well I was like I was like hey when's this gonna come up when's you gonna put this when's this going up and then it was like oh we're still working on did it did you say piss this do you think you said piss this? He pissed it. I think you meant post it. Post it. Hey, look, I misspeak all the time on this show. <laughs> I misspeak. I need someone here to police me. <laughs> well, I, I, I seriously I'm, sure I'm not the person to do it. All right, so uh, so obviously it was E3. We're at a party. I pull out my iPhone because Robert didn't have – he didn't have a recording device that was really worthwhile. Yeah, and you, and, guys, are, uh, you guys are sitting down drinking, eating food. Or so whatever. I ended up being on Post Game Report, and I'm on it for like – I don't know. I was on the episode for maybe, what, five, ten minutes? Not even. Here's a clip. Chris, okay, after, besides PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, walk us through other parts of your E3 experience. Uh, I was super excited that the PlayStation Move seems to still be around. You mean that little glowing knob that looks like... What was, I have a question for you. What was your favorite PlayStation Move game? Oh, wow. Um... It's back at home. It's House of the Dead. All right, well, with that, folks, uh, we, we technically got Chris Gore's wrap-up in E3. You know, he didn't say as much as I did, but he did what he could and everything like that. Chris, I, I mean, I know this wasn't, like, a typical call and everything like that. Maybe one day we could have you call in and deal with all the bullshit that I'll post game report. I, prefer, I always prefer to do in person. I always prefer rather than, you know, Skype. Everyone wants to do Skype. I like talking to people face-to-face. But, but yeah, E3 is just so much fun, such a blast. I feel privileged to be able to, you know, come to an event like this. So I feel extremely lucky. Okay, so that was the post-game report. Oddly enough, what's funny is a train just went by. I should mention because this is our train wrecks of 2012 show. I live, I just moved to a new place. It sounds echoey because I have no carpet in here. It's a little echoey in my space at the moment. I live right near a metro train in downtown LA now. So you will hear, you're probably going to hear, once I set up the room, you're not going to hear so many other bizarre noises. But where we're recording this at this moment, the train goes by about every 10 minutes. So... You're, you're definitely going to hear it. Anyways, hey, I really got to thank uh, Robert Workman for having me on Post Game Report. Even though it wasn't one of our best appearances, it was a, it was a fun train wreck. So you can, uh, you can uh, check out the show. Of course, you can Google Post Game Report, look them up on iTunes. Uh, you can follow Robert Workman, too, at the DCD. He's one of the funniest guys in gaming that I like to follow because he is no BS. And you can also uh, go to the show website, which is talkingaboutgames.com. All right, let's get to our next uh, uh, train wreck. We shouldn't really call them a train wreck. I want to say people don't feel 
Please don't feel that we're calling you train wreck. We appreciate all your time. No, you know what? Actually, feel that we're calling them train wrecks because if they'd done a better, if this was better, we would have. It would have been a whole episode. Right, and we, we try to work as much. So with the feel pro- bad about Jesus. yourself. I th- I think all <laughs> to all the podcasts out there that are part of the train wreck do episode, shows. the train wrecks of 2012 episode, which we're going to do on an annual basis now. This is going to be. I am I am now declaring. I am I, I'm declaring that this is an annual now event. The train wrecks of 2012 is an annual event that we will do. It's it, the, 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 we're, 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 so train wrecks of 2013. That sounds we'll good. We'll also keep in mind too that some of these are shows that you didn't do necessarily in this particular year, but it's stuff that like we our have, next clip, like Radio next, Drone. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So what, what now? Why is this a train wreck? I, I just felt that there wasn't enough content, but. You know, we uh, we had to do something with it, and I thought there was some stuff to use on there. And the audio is kind of a little bit wonky on it, you know, just because it's uh, it's like you a know, so funny. I don't even want to listen to it. I don't even want. I don't want to listen to it now. I don't want to hear it. All right, let's just hear it. We'll just let, let's just listen to it. Okay, radio drum. In fact, the X show led to doing the new movie show, also with Mark Cronin uh, at Mindless Entertainment, and a guy named James Rowley, who he and I were just. We bonded from the second we met because we were both huge movie. And the film fanatic was really his creation. So it was really as simple as I'd worked with this company before. We'd done two TV shows, new movie show and X show. And they said, we want you to host this game show. I said, great. I had to go to a game show camp to learn about all the laws. You know, like what are the legal things I can and can't say. And the worst part was was standing on stage with all these people and not being able to talk to them because I can't show any sort of um, bias towards any contestant. I can't, I really can just say, and I can't even, uh, there's no time limit as to how long they can answer. I don't even think that they knew that. I mean, they could take as much time as they want sitting up on stage. Not being able to communicate with the contestants is also where our mutual friend Mike White ended up kind of getting screwed exactly. unintentionally on that show. And, and Now, here's when I can communicate with them, after they lose. So after the guys would lose, they would go sit in the audience, and then I would go over and be buddy buddies with them, and we'd be talking about, well, you know, Logan's run. Yes, the effects are terrible in Logan's run, but, but oh, my God, Jenny Auger, she does full frontal in that movie, and it's PG-13. Um, and I'm not sure if she does quite full frontal. I think it's just her chest, but yes. No, 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 there's butt in there. Trust me. It's, oh, I have it on Blu-ray. I, I love Logan's run is one of my uh, guilty pleasures. You're hosting The Film Fanatic. Was it a happy experience since you didn't really want it in the first place? Um, yeah, I really fell into doing TV. And it was fun from the standpoint of just learning that stuff. But what I did not like about Ultimate Film Fanatic, which basically made me not want to do television anymore, was the fact that I could not be myself on camera. I was merely a traffic cop. I, could, I, could, I had scripted jokes. Um, every once in a while I could throw in thing that was my own. But... I was being told what to dress and told what to say, and I hated it. I really did not enjoy that experience. Okay, so uh, no, that was still fun. I mean, the audio look. It's but that the, the audio quality is always going to vary with this kind of sh- this show, right? Yeah. I mean, and this was this was uh, this was taped back in in 2010. Um, I don't know. Early it was, days of podcasting. Well, is that, is that the early days? No, it's not. <laughs> is that the early days? Well, you know, they, people still figuring it out. They're still figuring it out now. I, I still think that, there, that we're, we're not only, I mean, we're, I feel like every episode of this show, I, I'm figuring it out or I'm, I'm finding, I'm learning something new. Um, but but I do think that there's no format to podcasts. I don't think that podcasts should be, hey, we're going to interview each other. You know, we just sort of shoot the shit. No, I think that podcasting can go beyond that. A podcast can be something like a TV show. It could be like, like it could it, it doesn't have to be recorded in a studio. The quality doesn't have to be. You have to be able to understand what people are saying. But if there's noise happening around, I, I, I think that actually recording live somewhere um, is much cooler. I mean, I'm right near a train metro train track, and they're actually filming. They're filming some action movie outside my place where we were hearing motorcycles buzzing. You know, for for most of the night. Maybe they're doing a remake of the Death Wheelers. The Death Wheelers. That yeah. Precisely. Psychomania. It was well. Psychomania was the original title that I knew it by. I still, I actually have a DVD of, of it as Psychomania. See, I I'm love bringing that this movie. all back. I'm tying in all of our shows. Bringing show. it back. Bringing it back. But okay, so Radio Drum, that was fun. Uh, I, w- I want to thank Josh Hadley for, um, being a part of our Train Wrecks episode. We should have a special award for the people that are part of the Train Wrecks episode. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it's it uh, it was fun. Um, you can you can follow the show Twitter at the Cinema Snob, and you can go to their website. Uh, it's 
1201beyond.com. All right, let's talk about our next train wreck. Actually, this is an, I've, we did an episode of the show. This is uh, Shira Lazar's show, What's Trending. Yes. And it seems like every time I was on there, it was a train wreck. And by that, I mean, like, they <laughs> would kind of have me on as a recurring guest because I would always say incredibly weird stuff. They would always tell me, like, I'd have a producer come up to me and the producer the, the producer would come up to me and and you know would say okay um whatever you do just don't say the word penis and the first thing i would say is the word penis <laughs> my favorite part the first thing my favorite, like, yeah. my favorite part about this is and you, we'll, we'll hear this is you're talking about the star wars uh gift set and it's like you're literally it sounds like you're star wars gift set oh not the the, 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 the blu rays came out but there goes the train again did you hear <laughs> we could hear there's the train i love it uh but you're you're talking about the, the the Star Wars Blu-ray, and you're like, I love, I love this, uh, you know, this this set. I want to put my penis. It's like you're literally like, oh yeah, that is that. I said you're I want to sprinting. Put my... You're sprinting to. It's like something you're like you're sprinting so fast to get to that dick joke. Right, right, exactly. I just yes. Well, no, but the thing is, it's the worst thing when someone because my instinct is this. I just think comes from sort of my punk rock attitude that I can't seem to shake no matter how mature I seem to become like if someone tells me not to do something it's like that's the first thing I want to do <laughs> I want to do the thing they told me not to do which makes it terrible doing shows like this but What's Trending is uh, hosted by Shira Lazar she has a, a really interesting group of people and they talk about like what is trending on the internet things that are uh, obviously I mean that YouTube ties in, videos yeah, YouTube what videos means. whatever it is you know it's also business news and she gets uh, an eclectic group of guests it's usually like a comedian and then someone who actually has some reputation and in she's the tech absolutely world. adorable as a host oh no she is great she yeah. is she is amazing i want to i want to but i feel like if she loosened up like if she she should do the show drunk i want to see the drunk episode of what's <laughs> trending okay but, but let's uh, okay so here's here's the uh, clip from an episode of uh, what's trending that we never ran here's uh, what's trending train wreck style <laughs> So, Chris, do you think the hype will overcome the bad reviews for Breaking Dawn? Uh, reviews are irrelevant when it comes to a movie like this. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, the, the audience is I mean, going to go see it regardless. Is so huge. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I guess the thing that upsets me most is Robert Pattinson thinks that his hair is original. I was the first with this hair. <laughs> I should have trademarked it, but um, yeah, he stole my hair. That pisses me Where off. Where were your agents with that one? I yeah, love Twilight precisely. so much. But also, Vin Diesel has 25 million likes on Facebook. So I think that it's very... And <laughs> Harry Potter, the franchise. And has no hair. Million. So there yeah. you go. But so who do you trust more these days, your friends online or film critics, Sophia? Um, being that I have a website, I would say our community, I would trust my friends online. I don't really have that many critics that I go to that for that sort of information. So you're not yeah. like a Rotten Tomatoes fan. I mean, you don't no. you don't go online. I would say, yeah, if in your in your stream and your feed, you're seeing your friends are saying how good of a film is. I mean, but people offline it. are camping out. We're camping out for days. Um, the tweets have ranged from pretty ecstatic. People are crazy about Jacob and Edward and everything. But they're also sarcastic. We got a funny tweet from Kinsey Schofield, who tweeted, if you watch the news on mute, you don't know who's an Occupy LA protester and who's camping out for Twilight for the dying. <laughs> I love that tweet. Yeah. I really love Twilight, so I'm like really sensitive to comments about Twilight. But I understand that people don't. How, how do you reconcile the fact that in Twilight, these movies, it's sort of, I think it's a fantasy version of how women want men to act, except men Seeing aren't teens like that, that in real life <laughs> at all. They aren't like crystal clear, pale. Well, yes, they you don't have You are very white, and you're, you, yeah. you've, you've, you uh, could be a Colin. Yeah, you shine, you, gl yeah, you glisten here one. in the studio. Your hair is much better than Edward. <laughs> well, uh, uh, yes. Well, they've been actually doing agree, some but... interesting outreach. The fact is, there's a huge community. There's huge engagement. It doesn't take uh, that much effort to, cr to, in terms of a, a web outreach, to get people talking about this movie. Well, I feel like you know, that women have Twilight, guys have football. So, so two very gay things come together. Because <laughs> right. I think we all agree, football is the gayest of all the sports. I mean, they wear tights. <laughs> they get in piles. If you just listen to the announcers, I it was and what they say. Yeah, there's, if you just listen to the announcers, it sounds like they're announcing gay porn, you know? No. He got full penetration right up the middle. I mean, that's, you know, that's Fox Sports every, you know. Okay, so that was uh, what's trending. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Shira Lazar um, uh, for uh, having me on the show. And, you know, just because, you know what, Let, let's play another, let's play another clip from, uh, from, uh, from an episode of, of what's trending. This there was this was an episode 
This is an episode where we talked about porn stars. Well, former porn star Sasha Gray donated a few hours to a Compton elementary school last week to read to first and third graders. Many of the parents of the children were outraged that a former porn star was invited into the classroom. Sophia, parents upset about a porn star visiting, visiting their school. Do you like or dislike that? I dislike that story because I feel like she was doing something good, but I also think that I have a porn star with the exact same name as me, and so I'm really excited. Oh, you do? Yeah, Sophia Rossi. Oh. Yeah, she's really awesome. Um, I've never met her yet. Is that I your really alter ego? Her. No, I wish. She's blonde. Like, I would, could not be blonde. But um, I do feel like she was doing something good, but at the same time, I understand that these kids probably went home and told their parents, like, who they met, and it might have been confusing. I think they need to know so the you're a porn star, you can't move on and do good? Absolutely, you can. Like uh, or yeah. dislike this? I, I, I like this. Um, I don't know. I don't know why the parents are upset. First of all, well, I can um, see how, are the, how are the kids going to even know? You know what I mean? Um, if your kids are aware of porn stars, I mean, you're you're a horrible parent. Maybe there obviously there was some sort of PR center on this. Like, how did people find out? It was a but I mean, Sasha Gray. In terms of, I mean, she's she's starred in legitimate films. I mean, she's been she was in a Steven Soderbergh film um, called The Girlfriend Experience. She's on um, Entourage. Yeah, she's, she was on Entourage. So, Legitimate. Um, and also, she's, <laughs> yeah. she's a producer of her own content. I mean, I don't know. I, I have much respect for her, and I've met Sophia Rossi. You have? Don't take this the wrong way. I was disappointed that wasn't the one. That, oh, you thought? Oh, did you, you really, really think it was a porn yeah. star? I was very excited. Why do you think I said it'd be on the show? <laughs> I just you you tricked me! <laughs> That's what we like that to do. That was the carrot. Now we know how to get you on board. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, and I'll be the stick. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I, I really wish. I think that Shira should have a porn star on the show. I, I think she should. Okay, here's that clip we were talking about earlier about the uh, Star Wars Blu ray. Chris, the yes. Star Wars Blu ray disc. I need to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, it's, I, first of all, it's a great box set. I yes. mean, it's, I mean, this is the kind of box set I want to put my penis in. That's how good it is. <laughs> Um, Always here to bring the appro appropriate comments. Yes, well, you know what, because I want you to remember. I want you to remember. But uh, what's great about this is we're seeing deleted scenes we've never seen yeah. before and uh, from the original trilogy. I mean, I like to say I love all three of the Star Wars movies. And you get three bonus movies, which are the Star Wars prequels. So, so, did it deserve... Um, not a big fan of the prequels, but... Well, did it deserve all the, you know, flack it got for this? Um, well, what's interesting is is that George Lucas keeps changing the movies. He keeps, you know, adding new things. He changed mm -hmm. a sound uh, in the original Star Wars. Yeah. Um, if I keep saying this, I, I'm going to be so unattractive sexually <laughs> to all the women in the room if I continue no, talk to talk about, about Star, Star Wars. Wars. All right, but, um, but what I yes, I, I, I appreciate you pointing out that I uh, that I was racing to get that dick joke in. That was that was fun. It was fun. I mean, that, it was it was pretty. I mean, I, I love it because they, they right like you said like they don't want you to say it, but then as soon as you say it, it's kind of like you know who works on the show. You know who works on the show is cool. The guy who plays uh, Ask a Ninja. Oh really? Yeah. Oh there you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's, I love that guy. That's him. Doug. He's amazing. But uh, yeah, no, it was it was a fun appearance, and I, I like that you're on with uh, what's her face to uh, Punky Brewster. We're gonna, I think we're gonna hear that next. Oh, okay, cool. All right, here's another clip. Scarlett Johansson, this is what's happening, took some innocent pics of herself naked, and somehow they made it onto the internet. How does that happen? First they bolted around the web, then the FBI got involved, and then of course the meme Scarlett Johanssoning started taking a picture of your bare bottom using a mirror and a camera phone. Chris, people who are not Scar Joe posting butt pics, like or dislike? Oh, like, except when it's dudes. So uh, I think I speak for, uh, yeah, because... I, I don't know. I just I didn't know about this this trend, and I'm so happy you didn't. that you I did not. That's I, why we're here. I, I, yeah, I, I I appreciate it because usually I'm way ahead when it comes to the to the sex stuff. But um, <laughs> but yeah, no, this this is great. I, I fully support this. I want to combine Scarlett Johanssoning with Batmaning naked. I think that would totally. You should work. do it. You're into it. Do it with Call naked it with your Batman shoes. Sneakers, by the just way. do it with your shoes. Yeah, yeah. check out the sneakers. They're, awesome. They're custom. Did you custom make those? Yes. A little spray paint. Love it. All right, Soleil, are you going to be the next one? No, she's sharing uh, naked pictures of myself. I'm a mom. Showing your well, you send them to your Please. husband. Please. You send them to no. your husband, right? Oh, no, oh, oh my God, I just dropped my water. You have to be careful. <laughs> she just got a like, marriage oh. with my husband and I naked. <laughs> no. And she had to spit out her water. No. Yes. No, you are a beautiful lady. No, she but I mean, are you or just you like or just like this whole thing? Do I sex to your No, absolutely not. And a, you know, and a public a figure, you know, that's I, I the first person. I think he would think it's hot. Person. I think he would think it's hot. The worst thing is I can't, like, if there's a sort of low lowbrow joke that I can make, 
um, that I, 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 I go for it. I have to, I, you know what, I have, to, I have to dial that back a bit. I think I, think, I, think I go a little too overboard sometimes with that. Yeah. But um, I just, I, I feel like, first of all, it's like I know they don't want me to do it, which is exactly why I do want to do it, which is why I actually think that they keep inviting me back on the show. I don't know why they would invite me back if I keep they doing stuff. They enjoy like it, that's why. Well, the girl who played uh, Punky Brewster, I'm totally spacing on Soleil her Moon Fry. So, so Soleil Moonfry, yeah. Soleil Moonfry, yeah. She was really cool, but she was definitely bristling at the uh, a lot of the stuff that I was saying. Well, she's like because the, she's when like, you watch the video, because all of these, yeah. all of actually, all of the clips from What's Trending, you could actually find on uh, on What's Trending dot com, or they have a YouTube channel as well. Yep, it's all called all there. And and so look, I just want to thank uh, Shira Lazar for actually having a good sense of humor, because um, she keeps inviting me back on the show. Obviously, she likes me, and I think it's also the thing of like like I actually guest hosted the show once when she was out of town. Yeah, I know. I did guest host yeah. the show. Yeah, I remember. What happened? Did we ever run that? No, we didn't. Even, I, that's something actually. Whatever. I didn't get, yeah. Okay. Look, I, I, I we can't. and you did the Oscar episode. I did the Oscar yeah. episode too, but that was a whole episode unto itself. But but um, uh, but the fact that they actually keep inviting me back, I think, shows that um, I actually think I'm a better guest than a host. You know, like I feel like as a guest, there's no pressure. It's like if I say something offensive, they're I'm they're just not going to invite me back. They're not going to like. I'm not going to lose my job. No. I'm not going to lose my job being jobless at the moment. No. I'm, yeah, actually, true, true. I have to actually go to the unemployment office. I have to go to the unemployment office to, to apply. I haven't applied for unemployment in years. This should be a lot of fun. No. We'll talk, about, we'll talk about G4 later. We're talking about G4 actually in part two of the train wrecks of 2012 episode. But I want to thank Sheer Lazar for uh, having a good sense of humor and inviting me back constantly on the show. Uh, you can uh, follow the show at what at What's Trending, and you can go to whatstrending.com. All right, uh, we've got uh, uh, another clip here. Yes. Uh, this is a show. Now, this was a complete misunderstanding. This Being on this show was a kind of a complete misunderstanding. How do we explain this? It was... Well, I, I, all I know is the way that it worked out was we. This is actually I remember distinctly. I was. This at, was one of the first like when we put out the word like, "Hey, we want to do a ton of podcasts." Well, what happened was we were at your. Com- I was at your comedy show on Melrose the one time. Right. And uh, these guys, they're known as the movie guys, came up and said, "Hey, you know, let's have Chris do our show." But what we do is we kind of do like a video podcast, and then we also do a live show at uh, I believe it was actually I it's second. West. No, it's at second, second city. city. Okay, yeah. Second yeah city. And so they do this. They do this show. And they were like, well, we want to get Chris on, and we'll have like the scripted material, and they'll be fun. I mean, and I checked it out, and it was basically just exactly as they described it. And I think you had already kind of. Agreed but it's to not. Do it. It's not an improv show. Like I'm a guy that's like I definitely am more. Um, I can do stand up, like material that I write that is my own, and then I can also I'm. Evolving in, in in terms of doing improv. I mean, I guess improv is like getting up and just talking to people and then acting stuff out, like I do at IO on the comic book live show, right, right and whatnot. Um, and just like having you know done stuff like that for a long time. But the, the one thing you got to know about the show, the movie guys, it's completely scripted. It's one hundred percent scripted. It's it's sketch comedy that is scripted, and the script is dense. I mean, it is dense, and, and they're, they're saying so. You've got the script. It's like I can't memorize this. Yeah, I can't remember. Like I can't remember. And, and it's jokes, not like it's I not imagine. like it's not like I'm memorizing something where it's like, let's say you and I were doing a scene together. Yeah, you know, and I have to memorize like I say my line, then you say your line, and then and then like I'll like I'll listen to what you're saying, and then that reminds me of what my line is. But I will say this: I noticed like since I've been doing more acting, that um, this is something I've noticed. You'll laugh. You might laugh when you hear this. Okay. I shouldn't have actually prefaced it by saying you'll laugh because now there's pressure. No, I'm not going now laugh. I'm saying if if I say you'll laugh when you hear this and then you don't laugh, I've completely screwed. I have failed. I failed. <laughs> I have failed. I failed already by just saying it that way. Okay, but what what here, here's the deal? Whenever you see an actor, I believe whenever you see an actor pausing and you see like a dramatic pause, you'll see a scene and they've paused for dramatic effect. Usually it's the actor tr- just trying to remember what they're supposed to say next. 
<laughs> that's ex that's most of the time what it is because I know when I'm doing stuff like that, it seems like I'm being dramatic. I'm just trying to remember what my next line is. Yeah. And so with this thing, it was so. And those guys were super cool. They were so nice to me. But they wanted to do a rehearsal, and I'm thinking like, I thought I was supposed to be on a podcast. Isn't this? Oh, it's a video podcast. No, it's not a video podcast. It's they sh they they perform it at at Second City on Hollywood Boulevard, and I'm like, I didn't know. It's like it was completely confusing, and they were so cool because. Because they showed up to like two of my comedy shows and said, yeah, you should do our show. And then I'm like, I'd love to do your podcast. So it's, I find that it's not only not a podcast, it's like a video, it's like a video show that is performed live and then they refilm it. But the fact that I had to go to two rehearsals and they sent me the script that was like 40 pages and I'm reading it going like, I, I memorized this like I have a job like this is it was it just it really completely threw me off and they were really nice and they were really accommodating but I, but I like had I known what it was I probably would not have agreed to do this in Cabin in the Woods a group of teens and Thor head off in an RV to screw and count down the minutes till they die you know the drill here but so does the movie, as the term Cabin in the Woods is actually shorthand for any horror film like Evil Dead or Cabin Fever that takes place in a cabin in the woods. So this is like naming your movie Guy in Mask Kills a Lot, or Anniversary Killer Returns Again, or You Die in Your Dreams. So the standard cabin story spins off into new territory when Fred, Daphne, Velma, and the gang realize they're actually in a Truman Show-style construct only designed to look like the perfect place to get killed in a horror movie. Behind the trees are cameras and mechanics designed by a mastermind who controls the chaos from a central command. Man, they go through a whole lot of trouble just to fuck with a handful of teens. It's like a giant, psychotic, holodeck version of William Baldwin from Sliver. I make this joke because I'm doing my taxes and I'm still trying to write off the two hours I spent watching Sliver! Okay, I really want to thank uh, Paul Preston and the whole cast, actually, of the movie, guys. It was, I mean, the, the awkwardness wasn't necessarily scripted as it was the, the way I read it. But um, they really, they, I, they were upset that, that they, the show didn't get posted. Yeah, it right? took a while for us, because I, I, I kind of actually, to be honest, like the, the material. You were not honest before? Okay. You were not honest before. I was, I'm always honest, but, <laughs> but like, okay. So the the material itself, because they sent me the audio from the live show, right? And they also sent me the audio from this scripted uh, video that they did, right? And a lot of it inter, inter, interlapped, so there really wasn't enough. Interlapped material. isn't a word. I think you meant overlapped. Overlapped. Yes. And it, it, so I'm really good at making. So you're checking on. You're checking people. on me. Oh, I wish you would check me. I misspeak <laughs> all the time. I misspeak all the time. So he. And, but so yeah. they said they sent me this audio, and I was like, well. It, it, it overlaps, so it's like it really can't do much. Interlapped could be a word. That's a portmanteau. Yes, that's a portmanteau. If you portmanteau is a French word, and a portmanteau is two words that come together to form a new word. Interlapped could be a word. It's like one of my, one of my favorites. You could you could actually have a portmanteau bag. Which was a dumb thing that I tweeted a, a, few, a few weeks ago. Portmanteau bag, or a one of my favorite portmanteaus is uh, I'm really drungry, which means I'm drunk and hungry. I like drungry. Drungry. I've felt that way many drungry. times. Drungry. I use the That's word That's the drungry. worst kind of hu hungry. No, yes. Oh, and you're drungry. Because the thing is, you make really irresponsible choices. Like McRibs. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Jack in the Box. Okay, back to Jack in the Box could be a sponsor of this show. But let's. Uh, but, but okay, back, so you were saying but, but, interlapped. But, 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 interlapped and. You know, How was the audio quality? It was good. I just heard it was good. We fixed it. I mean, it was it was it was it was usable. It's just that the material that's just one where the material's not enough, and we it's not enough to, to make a whole episode of our show. Yeah, and, and, and but you know what? It's enough to be on the train wrecks of 2012. So in a way, you win, movie guys. They are getting you yeah, win. We are being featuring you. Check out their show. Go to themovieguys.net. You can also uh, follow them on Twitter at themovieguys. And one of these days, I will actually do their show. And I think it would be a good show if it was if they improved and sort of got away from the script. I, I think they're also the scripted. It, it feels too right. tight. Like if, if it was if there were teleprompter, I can work with teleprompter. I can work improv, but I found out that I cannot memorize something. Right. I can't memorize a speech. Yeah, no, you would not be good as a as a Lincoln. I would not. Well, but see, but none of those guys, the, the, all those speeches they have in front of them. 
all those like when you see when you see like uh, Obama or any politician and they've got those those sort of those angled pieces of glass a lot of people think those are actually to be used for um, to protect them uh, from you know uh, some you know assassination attempt that's where the teleprompter is it's on this glass so it's like when they're doing that sort of dramatic turn back and forth that turn like that they're just looking at glass that has words on it being scrolled it's not it's not this sort of thing that the secret service puts up mm-hmm. but i'll bet it's bullet it's bulletproof teleprompter is what it is so okay so that was the movie guys and uh it wasn't so bad of a train wreck. It wasn't so bad of a train wreck. I'm sorry they're on the show. It's you know what? I'm sorry that I you know what though when you told me first that you wanted to call this the train wrecks of 2012, Sean, I initially was like, "Hey, do we want to be saying something bad about podcasts that we've appeared on?" But the more I think about it, Actually, actually, it was my idea. I was going to say, I didn't say, that wasn't my idea, but... It was, well, it was just my idea to, like, we've got all these sort of, like, random clips. Where do we put all the random clips? I had something else I wanted to do. This is, like, a Halloween episode, but you... What was the Halloween episode? It was, like, something like the the horrors or something. The horrors of (laughs) podcasting? It was something about the goo... I had some sort of pun... I forgot what it was, but it was something about being... H doesn't make the best for, like... Uh, H, you, uh, well, I'm thinking alliteration. Yeah. H. And forget it. Okay. Well, let's All right, look, so we, so we cut should it off? We, no, well, what do you mean cut it off? We've got to talk about the Stitcher Awards. Oh. We were nominated... Pod Crash was nominated for two Stitcher Awards. One for Best Album Art and another one for Best New Show. And I have to thank... Every one of the listeners out there that voted every day yes, thank on you. Facebook, you had to first of all, you had to like the the, and there goes a train. This is perfect. I, I like it. That's perfect. But um, you had to like Stitcher page, which Stitcher is an app that like you can listen to podcasts. If you don't download them, it streams them. So the audio quality may not be as good, but it's like the fact you can just listen to your car. I mean, I actually do use Stitcher in my car at Stitcher, S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R. I use it in my car. And I guess they were saying that uh, Stitcher is going to be in 4 million cars next year. So it's a different, it's a, just a different way to listen to the podcast, whether you're on iTunes, you know, you get it from iTunes or you go to Libsyn or you go to Stitcher, whatever. But Stitcher is a, is a good way to find out about news. Anyways, so we're nominated for these awards. Thank you to the listeners for, yes. for actually getting us nominated. I think feel, being in that company was great. So nominated for Best Album Art, which actually it was... Um, that surprised me, but then good, again... Good Job Brain won. Yeah. Hey, great logo. Their logo, their logo like, and I met a bunch of them from, from that podcast. They do a podcast that's all about trivia because they play like they play like those trivia games that they do in like a bar night. You know, you go to like this bar night. It's like, hey, you can win 50 bucks They opened trivia. up the Stitcher Awards. They opened up the Stitcher Awards. Yeah. And you know what? Great logo. It's awesome logo. And then in the best new show, it was nominated with stuff like Aisha Tyler's show, Jay Moore's show, more stories, which Jay Moore's show and ended up winning. Just to be in that company of those other shows was great. Did not win, but it was really fun to to go there and uh, you know uh, just see the event and meet other podcasters. I'm too lazy to do a podcast. This is part two of our special train wrecks of 2012 episode. These are podcasts where things went wrong, things went awry. And normally, well, actually, I would say for most of these, the thing that went wrong was probably me. Would you say that that's true? Yeah, I mean, you know, easier that or if it's something in the format. But, you know, usually, you know, it's something you're saying or something you know, somebody else is saying. It's a variable mix of calamity. It's yes, a, cl- cl- the calamity of 2012. The calamities of 2012 didn't sound as uh, as good as train wrecks of 2012, which is I think is I, I'm I'm proud of my use of alliteration for that. Yes, <laughs> uh, I'm joined by the producer of Pod Crash, Sean Merrick, who's sitting here with me to explain what went wrong on some of these shows. And we've got we've got a few more shows for you. And I will say that later we're going to play clips from our San Diego Comic Con episode, where Kevin Pereira appeared on the show, uh, fresh from leaving G4. So there's a lot, there's a lot to be said about that. That's that's later on. We've got we've got a couple more shows to get to. Yeah, no, we got a bunch on here, and uh, I actually have a very special piece of audio for you. Uh, what, of one of the ones that we're playing? What? No, no, no. Just listen. Just listen. Uh, you were I, we, if uh, um 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 I, um I, 
um 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 Okay, what else can I say after listening to that except for, uh, I, the, 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 all right, so you cut this together and I... That, and that, that is just a small sample of what it is, because you have, like, this distinct, like, stammer when you're excited... Well, it's, I say, uh, 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 it's, uh, well, I was saying, uh, uh, it's, it's sort of like my, like, I'm trying to pause so that my thought, my, my mouth can catch up to my thoughts. But you don't want there to be any silence, so you have to say right. something. So yeah. I speak, I talk too much. Yeah. I talk too much. Yeah, and that results in a lot of ums. I actually will write a note to myself before I r- record stuff, and I'll say, don't say um. Well, and I feel like all that does is remind me to say um. Because you- because then you just keep saying. Actually, I've, I've many times you've been like, you'll you bring this up and say, I, I've reminded myself not to say um, and then you just say um right after that. I will. I will literally say um after saying, "Don't say um." <laughs> All right. So, uh, well, that was great. I appreciate that. That was like that was good. I'm gonna make that a. I'm gonna make that into a ringtone. Next year, that would be funny. Be, next year, that was only 30 seconds. Next year, it's gonna be a minute. <laughs> okay, for the train wrecks of 2013. But let's get to the train wrecks of 2012. Now, uh, this one actually is a very good friend of mine, Tom Gully. I was on the Tom Gully show, and right. I was on the first episode of his show, and Tom is a guy who... Was it the first episode of his show? Was, I think it was the first episode. It was a kind of a, a, a pilot episode for him. Oh, but okay. it's really not so much a train wreck as it just wasn't a regular show. He hadn't really gotten up and done the show, and he's a guy who does... He, I, I mean, he does marketing. Tom is a brilliant guy at, at uh, doing marketing. I mean, he came up with campaigns for a, a film I did uh, a while back called My Big Fat Independent Movie. He came up with a bunch of uh, uh, taglines and and ideas for the marketing for that film. Right. But um, Tom is hilarious. Um, he uh, does radio, and uh, he's a guy, I mean, I would describe him as like a comedian. He's like a comedic writer who happens to do marketing, who happens to do radio, but I think comedic writing is his strength. And he does a show, that it's actually now up and running, but when we first did started pod crash it wasn't really a show that was up and running and yeah, this- he's since done some uh, some episodes of the show but this is i mean it's i don't even know what this is doing on the train wreck episode but well, we, but we, but we, I mean, this is there's some funny. This, this is a funny clip. Skype's a little bit weird too on this. Yeah, I think a lot of it is. Yeah. So, all right, and there's another actual train. I should, I should mention that I just moved to downtown Los Angeles, and I live right near a metro station. So there's like a train going by here, about every, every ten minutes. So you're going to actually hear some trains on our train wreck episode of the show. So, uh, here it is, uh, the Tom Gully Show. Well, so you open Variety one morning. Yeah. And you learn that one of the major studios has announced a blockbuster project. The money's no object. It's got all the bells and whistles, you know, any, any, the biggest directors attached to it. And the title of the new film is The Adventures of Chris Gore's Penis. <laughs> Who stars and what's the plot like? Well, um, here's, here's, I'm going to go against type. Okay. I am going to mm-hmm. go against type. I think that Patton Oswalt should play me. In in my life story, I think it should be Pat Oswalt. One wouldn't think he's he's a little shorter than me. He's he's a little chubby. Uh, uh, not to say that I haven't had my chubby years. Maybe he uh, gets all De Niro and gets into type, and he has to lose a little weight. Did you oh, read the uh, article yeah, that he it wrote? Doesn't matter. Physical match isn't important. I, I I think that he he should do, because I think that um, I think that it would make the character more sympathetic. Um, uh, to be someone like Patton, I loved him in Big Fan. Yeah, he was so incredible. I, I, I didn't completely love the movie, but I thought he, the character he created was so incredible when he's practicing his response, his responses, and what he's going to say before he gets on the radio. All the interaction with his mom. I mean, it's just uh, there's just something. Uh, man, I don't know. I just um, I, I just uh, a big fan of Patton and what he does. And and the, the sad part was. He, I had seen the comedians of comedy at um, and the Sarah Silverman uh, documentary Jesus is Magic at South by Southwest, and I really was not aware of who Pat Oswalt was. He came up and introduced himself to me as being a huge fan of Film Threat, 
cut to years later that he's this comedian where I can't get enough of what he does. And um, just, uh, you know, just anything. I love his insights about stuff. I feel like I feel like we're almost too close in, in the way that we we both see the world. OK, so now I feel really guilty that, that Tom, this clip from Tom's show was on our train wreck show. What is this doing here? It's the same. Once again, it was the Skype and whatever. And We're going to do this in person at some point. Yeah. I know he lives in, in Texas right now. At some point, I'm going to be in person. I will do, Tom, I will do your show live. Yeah. So check out his show, which is hysterical uh, on Twitter. He's at Atomic Palooka. And you can find the show website is The Tom Gully Show. It's G-U-L-L-E-Y. The Tom Gully Show dot blogspot dot com. And just look up Tom Gully on, uh, on Facebook. He is hysterical. And uh, really, I think I, I, I think that I don't know what it's doing on the train wreck show. I blame you. Yes. I blame you. Sorry, Tom. Cool. All right, what do we have next? Uh, we got Men with No Lives, which I will say is one of my favorite names of a podcast I've ever heard. I I, I, I remember it. I just love hearing it. You remember the name Men with No Lives? Yes. Or you remember not having a life? It, 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 it's it's a personal. Re- reflection, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and actually, wait a second. Was this Men with No Lives? Was this? Wait a second. Was this the where I was actually? I was at uh, Kamikaze, Stanley's Kamikaze. Kamikaze. I was walking around, and these guys ran into me, and they just l- ran into me at the con. Didn't and you like, like arrange this via Twitter or something? I did. Well, no. I tweeted at them, and they were like, "Hey, we're at Kamikaze," and I'm like, "And we're doing our podcast," and I'm like, "Hey, could I be on your podcast?" Uh, or no, I, I I don't know. There was somehow he wanted me on his show, or I want whatever. We ran into each other at, at Stanley's Kamikaze, which is it's basically kind of a mini very mini Comic-Con mm. that takes place in Los Angeles at the LA Convention Center. And so uh, we just bumped into each other and he pulled out his microphone and threw me on the show and here it is. Well, after a lot of searching and uh, tweeting, I actually bumped into Chris Gore just accidentally. Now, the last time everybody heard Chris Gore on Casador Radio was on No Elf and Wave from Phoenix Comic-Con when he did his pod crash with uh, Anna Von Winter. And then, and then, if you recall correctly, we never had sex. I don't think you want to, Chris. Um, well, no, I, here's the thing. I like to flirt with a lot of women. There's three triplets there I might want to flirt with later. I've, n- I've never seen three tri- I've never seen triplets that hot, like, in person. Anyways, I, here's the thing. I flirt, and flirting to me is like it's good for business. It's good for, I like, it's a way to relate to people. But also, I just want the option. I want to know that, and as soon as I know that I can, then I... Stop. Sort of like, ah, we could, but then there's talking involved and then emotions. And so then I usually just back away slowly. I do a slow fade, as a great cinematographer once said. Well, to be fair, the second uh, you responded to Anna's tweet, I got a phone call of her basically coming all over the place going, oh, my God, I get to be on Chris Gore's podcast. Like, what do I do? What do I do? And she didn't act that way. She acted very coy. Um... You know, but it's sort of the same thing. Like, whenever I find out a girl has a boyfriend, it's like pfft, on Facebook, unfriend. What's the point? So that was uh, Men with No Lies with uh, Dan Narciso, Michael Flores, and Victoria Page. They're on the show, but I only talked to one of them. And frankly, I don't remember if I talked. I think I talked to probably Dan. Dan. I probably talked to yeah, Dan. Yeah, it was Dan. That's what I talked to. But um, I do. You know what? I love their name too. I think I think Men with No Lives is a great name. I think I think Dan's actually like a. St- I think if I'm, if I'm mistaken, I think he's like a stunt man. So he's got a pretty important life. Wow, yeah. I didn't know that. I think he's. Yeah, I think they do something hip. I I I, I should I should have researched say, this. When, yeah, when when you say you think, <laughs> I think it's better if we have the facts in front of us rather than speculate. Well, they, people can get those facts if they go to their website. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is though, uh, you speculating about that is no worse than pretty much every pundit that you see on on television news. When you see those pundits on like the twenty four hour news channels and they're talking, they're always talking out their ass. They're mm. always talking. Out, there's no there's no facts associated with most of what they're saying. They're guys with a PO box and have a consulting group. The- I could do I could do a group called the Gore Group, and it would be a consulting group. And it's I have a PO box in Washington D.C. and I could put on a suit and I could be on MSNBC or CNN or Fox News as an as as something. I should do that. I should start crashing news shows mm, and yes. and p- uh, p- passing myself off off as an expert. Or I love this term. It's a, a political strategist. 
or a Democratic a advisor, a Democratic strategist, a Republican strategist. I will be a strategist of anything, and it'll be, I'll be under the Gore Group, and you know what? They're actually they're filming an action movie in my neighborhood. We can hear helicopters and motorcycles, along with the train going by. It, you know, you may not be able to hear it, but we can hear it here. Uh, but uh, we, we've got uh, plenty of more train wrecks here including my company, The Gore Group, which I am going to announce. Oh, I, I, I should mention, uh, Men With No Lives, you can go to their website, menwithnolives.com. You can also follow them on Twitter, at Men With No Lives. But I do think I should start, I should start some, some group where I just pa pass myself off as a consultant or... Uh, I, 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 don't I, think, I think The Gore Group actually does sound like a completely... Legitimate well, organization. Legitimate, legitimate. The Gore Group. Yeah, the, the Gore. I mean, I would be like the Gore. I was like, oh shit. How about Gore. that Gore Group? That See, Gore that, Group. That, could that, be that, good. Not, not that that that. Makes that Gore it. Group. You know that Gore Group. That Gore Group. Yeah. That Gore Group. I, that couldn't be. That couldn't be a consulting firm. I couldn't be a. I could be a democratic strategist, and I could be giving it a horrible advice. And I see, I think it would be funny to actually be, where, forget where you stand politically, just be someone who is on one side of it and just be completely horrible. <laughs> All your opinions are just the worst. You're actually helping the other side in yeah. a way. That would be fun. All right. Let's talk about Comic Con. No, no, we got we got one more. We got one more. Oh, wait, we got one more. We got more. Okay, so what is this one? You got to introduce one, this, this one. This one is uh, the Double Down Film Show. Um, I was on a show called the Double Down Film Show. This was from 2009, uh, I believe, and it was you were. It was an it was an early show. I had. This is something that like. When I, we didn't know each other. We I just happened to be invited on a Double Down film show. Yeah, and this is, sounds like you were. Uh, these are. It sounds like the audio sounds like two guys standing over a speakerphone and you're talking to them. Well, don't, don't ruin it. Let's listen to it. What would you say? You know, whether large festival, small festival, hidden gem. What do I, as a filmmaker, need to bring with me in my suitcase to make sure that I can take advantage of this opportunity? Oh, that's uh, that's. That's a good question in terms of the suitcase. I, I mean, I've actually already pre-packed, and I've been pre-packed for years because I might go somewhere on a moment's notice. So um, I think sort of the things you wouldn't think would be like, I always have something formal to wear because I don't know. Like some of these some of these festivals I've gone to and, and they have black tie events, and I kind of like to have a, I, I like to have a tuxedo jacket, what can I say? So I would say bring some kind of formal wear. Um, that you might need at least at least one piece. Uh, I always pack a lot of vitamins uh, because <laughs> because you, you do a lot of partying and you know in order to keep up, I think it's important to stay healthy. So so I, I try to I, I pack vitamins and I also pack a, a, a pill box that has every ailment. It's like sinus headache medicine, this kind of medicine, just every kind of medication you could possibly. So it's all packed into one uh, pill box just in case any sort of emergency arises. I'm actually, I always try to be over-prepared for stuff. Okay, so now I remember that Double Down film show. That was just, I think it was, it was, a lot of it was just stuff about film festivals. It was some film festival stuff. But that was, that was an interesting, that was an interesting. Clip. You had some good things to say on there about bringing vitamins to film festivals and bringing formal wear. I thought that was actually a pretty, people will actually oh, yeah. gain from that. That was, yeah, that was, that was a show I talked all about my advice about going to film festivals. And one of the things I always do is I take a tuxedo I do. I will pack a tuxedo to a film festival just in case, and it always there always ends up being some formal event. And filmmakers are like, "I'm too cool to dress up." I come in in a tuxedo, and I feel like I kind of I don't know. I feel like whenever I dress up like that, I feel like I'm faking, like it's Halloween, like I'm dressed up formal in this in this tuxedo. But I feel like it's more like a costume. Like this is my James Bond costume is a tuxedo. Yeah, that's that's all I need. Is a because that's pretty much his costume. If he was a superhero, James Bond cost, James Bond's costume would be a tuxedo. Yeah, that and a gun. All right, so now we. So I, I would like to thank the Double Down Film Show with Anthony Artis and 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 Pete Chapman. Uh, I, look, the audio might have been not the best, but um, I think the content was interesting. And you can check out the show. Go to blogtalkradio.com slash Double Down Film Show, and you can follow the uh, Pete on Twitter and the show at Pete Chapman. And it's C H A T M O N. 
Although all this stuff is on the Tumblr. Why do we even repeat this? Mm -hmm. All this stuff is on the Tumblr, which you actually manage the Tumblr. If you have not checked out the uh, uh, Tumblr, just go to podcrash.net. It points right to the Tumblr. Yeah. And the Tumblr is like an FAQ for every episode of Podcrash. It's like all the social media links, everything you need to know, all the Easter eggs and secret stuff. All the It's, it's, it's really amazing that you, you do that every week. I, I, I very much enjoy it, and we try to, I try to fit in as much uh, Easter eggs and like bits that things that you people would people wouldn't understand. When you say you people, who are you talking about? I'm talking about the podcast you listeners. You talking about the, the I'm discriminating against those podcast listeners. I love our listeners. I love I love when, I love meeting at the listeners at our live shows. Yes, no, you people. Like at the. Uh, I almost said it again. What you all? Oh, you're saying you people again? All right. If you would, I would like to meet you people. Come to actually, we should. This, here's a plug. Um, Saturday, January 12th, come to Podcrash Live at IO West. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a special Star Wars show. Um, we're having seven uh, people from different podcasts um, talking about the next Star Wars trilogy. It'll be speculation, hopes, fears um, about what this next trilogy will be because it, this is the, now the sequels to Star Wars. You know they're making Star Wars episodes 7, 8, and 9. Um, Mark Hamill's supposed to be in them. You're going to see cameos, of course, I'm sure, from all the uh, uh, original people from uh, the, the original trilogy, the OT, which is my personal favorite trilogy. Um, and, and we're going to be doing a live show at iOS, which is going to be it's going to be insane. And the same night, Comic Book Live will be performing at 11.30 p.m. Uh, a, it's, it's basically an improv version of Star Wars Episode Seven, All in costume. It's awesome. And the, the, also the same night is Super Bar, where basically everyone at iOS, or everyone attending, shows up in costume. It's like a cosplay bar. So, and you get two-for-one tickets if you're in costume. So tickets are only five bucks for the entire night. How much comedy is that for the whole night? And we'll be doing a blue milk tasting at 7.30 p.m. The show's at 8 p.m. You can go to ioimprov.com slash west. And if you can't make it to the show, you can watch the show uh, streaming live on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash podcrash TV. All right. Now we got to talk Talk about San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, Comic Con. Okay. okay, there are many reasons that this is this is on the train wreck episode. Uh, not the least of which is the fact that the audio. I think we only got part of the audio. Well, this is also something too. We didn't quite understand that we can take this uh, recorder, this Zoom recorder, and patch it into the board and get the audio directly from there, which is something that which I is, which which is not the biggest mistake you've made, because the biggest mistake, let's talk about it, was when we were recording our first live show, very first live show, was with the Defective Geeks at a comic book store, and you forgot to press record. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, because it was flashing, and I, I don't you, realize that. It was like, oh, it was flashing. You forgot to press record. Of it, but now it's a good. The good thing was it was there's backup. I mean, there were like two other backup sources. Yeah. But but forgetting to, I I I all I could do was just laugh. And it was just sort of like, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Get mad? We got like we, halfway through, and I was like, oh, it's not recording. It was funny, but uh, yes, the thing is, every time we do one of these things, it's a learning experience. But San Diego Comic Con, the intention with this show. Because uh, there are cl video clips of this on our YouTube. The intention of the show was to set a world record yeah. of the most podcasts crashed at Comic-Con. That was, that was the intention. Right. That was our goal at the beginning of the show. And this was fresh off of, because this is in July at the San Diego Comic-Con. It was in a big room. There were over 100 people there. At least, over 100 people there, at least. It was a good crowd. A good crowd. And Kevin Pereira agreed to be on the show. Because he does a show. He did a show called Fun Employment. That's what we called it. We yeah. called it, yeah. So he was on a show called Fun Employment, which he did for a while. So this was our excuse for having him on. But now he legitimately has a show called Pointless with Kevin Pereira on the Death Squad Network, which is an awesome show. I don't know why I haven't been asked to be a guest yet. Why have I not been asked to be a guest? Mm -hmm. Tweet at Kevin Pereira. I believe he's at Kevin Pereira. Or, no, it's, no he's, at, Pereira. He's, he's at K Pereira. See, I wrote Ke it down. Uh, yeah. Tweet, tweet at both of them, actually. Tweet at K Pereira and ask him, why have I not been a guest on Pointless? I should be on that show. I, I really feel of, uh, that, that Kevin and I had this kinship just because we were just so brutally honest about stuff constantly. Like off camera. This guy's off camera demeanor is amazing. He's just, he, he is a class act. So he agreed to be on, on uh, the, the podcast at Comic-Con. And I think what's so funny is I have spoken now I ten say, times longer than the clip we're about to play. Can I say Kevin Pereira, yeah. when he showed up at Comic-Con uh, for this thing, he, had, he was dressed way dapper, too. He had the best suit. 
They can't, who cares? They can't see. This is an audio podcast. But you can watch they the can't clip, see can't you? It. You can watch the clip on, on YouTube. It's a great suit. It's a, all right, so here it is, Kevin on our live show at San Diego Comic-Con. We're setting the world record. I, 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 gotta, I have no idea who's coming up next. Let's see what happens. Thank you for saving my pen. Come, come do me a favor, Kev, and then I show up and you're talking about uh, vampire orgasms or something? Like, what yeah. the hell did I get into? Yeah, well, I mean... By the way, they release bats upon climax. They were... Re- <laughs> a giant swarm. Yeah, a bat comic. But now, you have a podcast. I don't know. Not really, but I'll lie. Um, yes, lie. <laughs> Hello, this is... That's me. Blank, yeah. yeah. Whatever you want to do. Hello, this is Kevin Pereira with the, uh, I guess, Fine Employed podcast. <laughs> Brief description. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> my guest today is Chris Gore, and we are talking about... Unemployment. Yeah. So let's talk about that. If anybody um, is hiring, I am available. Well, yes, I mean, there's actually I, two things I really want to talk to you about. One, uh... I, so you're not an attack of the show anymore. That is, yeah, it is apparent. Yeah. And yeah. like you watched anyways. <laughs> oh man, I think about you as I skip over your show like I usually do. <laughs> Gotta make room for Master Chef. <laughs> Delete. But, Story of my life. But that, but that, the thing is, okay, so but this, you made a really bold choice. Thank you. You could have stayed. I couldn't. They, I was fired actually. And I was like, for a while, contractually, I had to say, thank you for laughing at my unemployment. That was very kind of you. I, I think they contra- booted me out, and I'm going to lose my house. <laughs> but Hope the, you have a four-seater. But the weird thing is, is like, I look at like, like Hardwick, they, he's, he's, even though he's been filling in, Careful. he's not there. Careful. Okay. <laughs> Hardwick's not there. Adam Sessler, who I love, yeah. is also not there. Yeah, Adam you, Sessler. who uh, inspired me, really. I feel like, because like, I work with so many different people in TV, you're one of the people that taught me so many things. And this is the thing that a lot of you guys don't know about, because you don't see what happens off camera. This guy is the coolest guy to everyone. He, okay, unlike, unlike, me? Yeah, unlike three. me, <laughs> unlike me, he knows the names of everybody on the crew. I don't. I... I'm horrible with names. You know, every you're super. You're no, yeah, off Chris is an name. asshole off camera. He he wanders in. He doesn't look people in the eye. He throws coffee like at PAs. Like I don't want to hold this anymore. Splash. Shouldn't surprise you. Just but, melted faces everywhere. But but like I just I you know just of all the people I work with. I mean you're just so you were just so your off camera demeanor you. was like something you set an example on the show. Thank you very much. Which Thank was you. great. But I, I started out as a PA. You cannot go, like, you can try to go zero to 60 and go from PA to asshole in this industry. You can try. It's really hard when you've lugged around coffee and balance bars and sandbags to not appreciate every single person Wait. that contributes to a production. I feel the same way when I go to Burger King because I used to work at Burger King. I feel like if you've ever worked a service job, you're like, oh, I'm going to be nice to those people because I was that, mm-hmm. right? But, um... So and you, I will rub a balance bar on my taint as a PA. If I don't like what you say or do to me, I'll give it a once-over and hand it over to you. Pretty much tastes the same. But, much. but It's you, organic. But you, so, but you made a bold choice based on... Because I kind of feel like... Looking I did at, choose to leave. Yeah, I did, I did make the choice. I was not ousted, by the way. G4 was very kind. Uh, my contract was up. They offered to renew. I just kind of want to set out and do my own thing. Uh, I did not think that one through. <laughs> but now, but now, so, so, like, uh, I, I kind of feel like when I look at the G4 booth, I don't know if you guys have been by the G4 booth, it looks to me kind of like a reverse gangbang. There's like all these hot chicks, all these hot chicks, and Blair Herder. <laughs> Man. Yeah. I'm, the I'm, tightest I'm, vagina of the group, though. <laughs> by far. It is amazing. Reverse gangbang. Great is a, Genre of porn, you can look it up on uh, PornoTube or any of the sources. But uh, so it's weird. I kind of feel like, um, and I'm a white guy. I feel like they're killing off white guys. <laughs> I, what I'm saying is, is that I always felt the network was very. Look, that's G4's big plan. Big to plan. Just, like, Kill off all the, the white guys. Asian genocide. Oh, I'm next. I'm next. My contract is open. Well, name one guy on the network that's not white. 
Exactly. Like yes, you're, yeah. it's just, you're just letting go of the guys. That's all that's happening. Right. That's, yeah. So that's pretty much. Yeah. Which is weird. Like, I because aren't we supposed to be smarter? Isn't that wasn't that supposed to thing? We're gonna be smarter. The network is supposed to be smarter. What? Are you starting a race war? Or are you talking about G4? No, 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 I'm not, I'm not talking about, no, no, I'm talking about the network. No, 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 I wasn't talking about what. I was talking about the network. The views this... and opinions expressed on this panel, especially the fucking elitist American History no, X ones, <laughs> are solely the doing of Chris Gore. Tell that fine group over there where you're staying tonight, Chris. Go ahead. Tell them. I'm going with you. We'll what? film that shit for YouTube. <laughs> Let me clarify. By smarter, I meant the network was supposed to be. We're going to smart up the network. And you know, that, was they, the, that was the mantra, right? We're going to smart up the network. I'll I, tell you this. Uh, no to reference com- to To be completely candid, no, Chris is right. Like they, The network wants to be a little more, uh, I think, intersection of GQ meets Wired. Which could be an interesting thing. I'm, I, I, I don't. Would yeah. you guys watch that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the same reaction you're giving me. Say, would you watch G4? Yeah. But, um, oh, hey, thank you. We gotta keep you're coming around. Cause I, I, there's a couple questions I got. I got. Okay, so I'll just, I will say this. I think they're 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 going to try and smart it up. And I, I there's some great fucking people there. I'm sorry I keep cursing, but I can now, so fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, there's, there's really, really, really great people there, and I, I hope that they get a chance to turn that thing into the place that, uh, that they want it to be. I just, unfortunately, I didn't want to hang around and kind of see if that was going to happen. I wanted to strike off on my own. Well, um, and, and I mean, you should throw in some plugs for some of the stuff that you're working on, sure. because you've got this amazing tour lead up. Yeah, we're doing a nerd carnival. We're trying to take, uh, thank you. Sweet. Uh, we're going to announce it. I'll pause for applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for amazing. I'll sign out quicker than I wanted to. There we go. Uh, we are, uh, we're going to announce the lead-up. You were at the first one. It was awesome. Uh, yeah, we, we're throwing a bit of a nerd carnival. We're taking it to ten cities at the end of this year. We're going to announce the dates next Tuesday once the Comic-Con madness winds down. But we're doing ten cities. It's a little bit of Comic-Con, a little bit of E3, a little bit of Coachella, uh, all rolled into one. A little Adult Con as well. It's pretty crazy. The Adult Con interests me. If, if you needed anyone to be a part of that, I would, lo- I would love to be part of that. To leer creepily in a leather mask in the corner. Or a slave layout fit. I have many options yeah. in my costume wardrobe. But, um, wait, 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 wait. So... <laughs> But, but I, because I, I, I love, first of all, that I feel like, you know, you're in a position now where you can do the thing you're really passionate about, which I think, which I think is, is awesome with lead up. Let's talk about girls. Um, we had an interesting, a couple years ago, I don't remember what one this was, but I think we both broke Are up. Are sharing one? What is this story? No, no, this, remember? no. this was the weekend where we both broke up with girls, and then now I feel that this has returned. We're both sort of, we're both sort of, I, I, well, I'll be honest, I'm kind of butthurt from a recent breakup. And I, and, and, you're acting was surprised. She, well, because you, when you're, like, was she responsible for your butt hurting and that's why you broke up with her? Like, did she take it too hard? And Um, that's not my complaint. Uh, but, no, I, what I'm saying is, is that, you know, we've both experienced some, maybe you don't want to talk about this. Um, so I'm we, screaming that with you as hard as I can with my eyes. Oh, yes, yes. And I do not want to go yes, down this road. Yes. No, that's fine. Yeah, my heart's shattered. I'm a shell of a man right now. Hey, who wants to party with me? <laughs> Unemployed, a fucking girlfriend. Oh, this is great. Thanks, Chris. I'm having a really awesome time. If you guys want to cry with me, I'll be in the lobby of the Sheraton tonight. Where's looking that? at photos on my cell phone of what could have been. <laughs> Play the music, please. Play the music. Can you cue it up? Can Kevin it? Pereira, you, folks. How do I follow that? Okay, so uh, Kevin being on the show was a huge coup. Uh, we kind of interrupted the show for because what we were trying to do was sort of like, it's almost like speed dating. We were trying to do as many podcasts as possible, like a speed dating thing. Like, they'd come on, be on for a minute, and then be off. But Kevin stayed for like 10 minutes, uh, uh, as you heard. Well, the intention was to keep him on a little bit longer. Yeah, so we could actually talk about, because he had just left G4, yeah. and he wasn't 
doing for the very first time, he was not doing um, San Diego Comic Con live. You know, the, the 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 sort of live show. I wasn't on the show either, which is which which was fine by me because then I could actually enjoy being at Comic Con. Whenever I have to do that live show, it's all kinds of running around, running around to be on TV for two minutes. You were not on the collage. Thing. I wasn't in the I wasn't in the collage. Who cares? I wasn't in the collage. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I I, I, I d- 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 you know I will ad- I'm going to address my feelings about G4 when I'm on Pointless on Kevin Pereira's show. That's when I'll discuss it. Mm. That's when I will discuss it. But um, I will say that uh, that having him on right after that was a good way, I think, for him to kind of uh, release about it. He was awesome. He was good. Okay. So there were other podcasts. Uh, and here's... We, we, we were on... Well, if you want to follow well, Kevin I'll, Pereira, I'll, he's I'll, at Kay Pereira and look up his show, Pointless, with Kevin Pereira. Uh, you can find it on iTunes as part of the Death Squad Network. But let's talk about... Uh, we're just going to play a montage of some of the other podcasts that we were on, which were... Uh, what, what are some of them? Shoddy Radio was one that was on... Shoddy Radio, Quasi Psychologist with uh, Marisha Ray, who's uh, smoking hot. She's yeah, the, Batgirl. Uh, what, what else? That, that was, uh, those were the only ones that were featuring here because those are some of the ones that other shows that were on that this on the on the San Diego Comic Con were shows that actually have been featured on other episodes of Pod Crash and these particular two uh, that were also playing. No one cares. All right, let's just listen to the clips. I know we don't have time for more uh, for formalities. We're running out of time. Let's go for it. So my show is called Shoddy Radio. It's a really funny show. If anyone listens to podcasts, listen to Shoddy Radio. I swear to God, it will make you laugh and it's interesting. But if you don't listen to podcasts, then you don't care. Uh, but my question for you, we don't have time to do my show, but we have a debate on our show, so I figured I'd ask us. Let's end the debate now. Uh, what is it? One of, one of the, show, the hosts of the show swears that at any time in the L.A. area, there are at least 400,000 people watching Cool Runnings. He used to think it was on. He, he, he used to claim that it was 400,000 people were watching Cool Runnings on VHS. He's let go of that. He's, he's let it go a little bit. How many people do you think right now in between San Diego, including San Diego, all the way up to LA, the greater area, are watching Cool Runnings right now. Think about it for a second and give an honest answer. You have to consider it's gonna be on some network. Can I just say, first of all, great question. (laughs) (laughs) Secondly, um, I would say that you are working with someone who is really mentally deranged. (laughs) I think his brother think just happened That is a to weird theory. His brother, has, I think, is the biggest Cool Runnings fan ever, and every time he goes to his house, he has it on for his kids, and I think that's completely warping his sense of reality because I, it's always on TV at his brother's house. I like that. There's, like, certain movies where it's like, I'm just going to keep watching this movie, and then I'll just watch it again, and then I'll just watch it again, right. and I'll just but watch it again. Let's get to it. We're, we're running out of time. How many people? I need a number, Chris. I'm going to say Four. Honestly, you're, that's, I know you're going for You're trying to be funny, but be honest. You know more than four people. Oh, no, no. I'm going to say four. That's my honest answer. That's my honest it's answer. It's an excellent four. movie. It's, uh, I mean, I'm, 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 not you, saying it's I'm an, on the low end of the spectrum, but I'm just saying four. I think you're just, you're, you're, right, but I'm not you're saying just it, making an ass out of me and you. Oh, no, no. Oh, wait. No. I mean, I might be as a side benefit. I'm saying that I think it's four. I actually think it might be four people at any given time. Just because the movie is... Uh, it's been around for a while. Well, it's coming out. It's the twentieth. Twentieth. Uh, let's year. talk. Ab- you know be re- Disney's let, opening the ball. But let's. You know what? Let's talk about the Cool Runnings reboot. That's what I'm Should saying. we? <laughs> because they're rebooting everything in Hollywood, and you know, I think that that you, that now that you should have a boner about, right? I mean, that four hundred thousand people make so four. You're going four. I'm gonna well, say four. Hi. Hey, Marisha. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm good now that you're here. Um, hi, well, I, I am I am not Kevin Pereira, so I get like 30 seconds. You have a boyfriend, right? I do. Yeah, oh, fuck. All right, so what? Just, let's get this quick. Um, so what, what's uh, what's your podcast? What okay. Uh, yes, my name is Marisha Ray, and I am one of three hosts on a podcast called Quas called Quasi Psychologists. And we answer bullshit Sounds questions. Sounds sexy. Bullshit. Keep going. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a like a pseudo psychology answer your problem show, but uh, with oh god, I need to come on your show so bad. <laughs> We'd love to have you anytime. I, no, I need to go there. I need to go to your show. You need you need to go to my show. I need to go to your show. Which and happens you to my help. living room. I need to, but also, okay, let's. Uh, that, first of all, sounds great. What I want to talk about though is uh, sure. sort of a plug. Also, something for me. Yes. You dress as Batgirl. 
Yes. Well, sort yes. Can you talk about it with me? Yes. I, um, I am in currently involved in a Batgirl web series, and it's following Stephanie Brown, Batgirl, what? She got canceled by the D52, so we're bringing her back. Um, so yeah, it's called Batgirl Spoiled, and you can go to batgirlspoiled.com. Oh, I've seen the videos. Yeah, and uh, we will actually be premiering this is the first time I'm announcing this, and my producer might get really mad at me, but who gives a shit? Um, we are actually premiering at Kamikaze in LA. Fantastic. Which is in September. Can I go with you? Sure. The boyfriend thing. Yes. Is it, how is it going? I mean, there's so many problems in relationships these days. Um, it, Things can end. They can end at Comic-Con. It's happened to me. Um, how are you... Oh, well, I was, it, um, would you like to meet my boyfriend? Because he's right there. No. Uh, <laughs> but thank you for thank having you. me on your show. Yes. Okay, so that was good. But uh, I mean, I, I think it's not so much that the podcasts were a train wreck as the panel was a train wreck. Because the whole premise of the panel was we kind of had like this, the idea behind it was that like, uh, we're doing this show but um, th we, were, we were going to, at the end of the show what was going to happen was that there already was a world record for podcast crashed at Comic Con and then the way to save it was and you were supposed to come out and say a line, right? I came out and, yeah, I came out and tried to say a line and then I just... And the line was delivered so bad, so <laughs> stiff, that I had to comment on it, that it was so bad, like, oh my God, it was just you came out and said, like, Chris, Chris, it's not gonna work. There's all there's already someone already made the record of that. And so what happened was there was another panel called Comics on Comics, and Comics on Comics did their live show at Comic Con. So they agreed to have me on their right. panel, and then that would be the 13, which would be the world record for the most podcast crashed. And we're supposed to have a balloon, and we didn't have a balloon. We were gonna have one balloon like go up there, like we were. This was our celebration. Was one sort of lone balloon. It was supposed to be, I, I was going to say, release the balloons, and then one balloon would actually fly into the air. That was the idea behind it anyway. Yeah. It was pretty bad, right? Yeah, it was, a, it was, kind, of a, it was kind of a mess, but it was fun. I uh, it was fun. It was I got to meet a bunch of cool people there, a couple of cool podcasts that got to show up, so that was Those are great fun. stories. I love that you told that story about you meeting cool people. At Comic Con. Would you like to hear more about it? Well, uh, there's got to be a story. If you're gonna have, if you're gonna bring up that you met cool people, there should be name one cool person and give me an anecdote about what happened. I met. So Cla you don't even remember. Claire. Remember Cra me? I met Claire Kramer. Yes. And she was very nice to me. I know that's all. I <laughs> all right. God, met, I'm. T that's what. This is why the show's called. You Podcast met a lot. You, you you met a lot of cool people. That sounds like that sounds like a Facebook status update. That doesn't sound like something. <laughs> don't. That's not even worth tweeting. That's not worth. God, that's, a, that's a terrible. Tweet. You have to, no. D don't. Don't. Yeah. You need. To, there needs to be a specific in there. Something specific that happened. Uh, oh no. You know what? That was. That's really about it. I missed a lot of fun from people. I. I didn't really. It, it wasn't. I was actually more just trying to get the show to run and everything. <laughs> Yeah, you were very nervous. I was very nervous. You were very nervous, and, and it was your and it and it and it and it, it actually that was my maiden voyage into live producing a pod crash. And you've gotten much better at it. Yes. The the latest uh, pod crash uh, events at, at IO West have gone very well, and I can't wait to do it in a city other than Los Angeles. Yes, that's gonna be fun. It's coming be fun. coming soon. There there's there, there's some events. I can't announce them now. It's too early. Okay, so I really want to thank uh, the people from Shoddy Radio and Quasi Psychologist and all the podcasts, actually, that were on our San Diego Comic-Con uh, event. That was, it was like the speed dating of podcasts. It was fun. Uh, so you can follow Kevin Pereira at K Pereira, follow uh, Quasi Psychologist at Quasi Psych, and Shoddy Radio at Shoddy. That's uh, Shoddy Radio. Yes. Shoddy, not shitty radio. S-H-O-D-D-Y, not shitty radio, Shoddy Radio. Follow them on Twitter. So this, this um, you know what, I'm not, gonna, uh, I'm not gonna say that this is necessarily the end of this show. I'm just gonna say, let's get out of here. Eddie's bound 12 is crawling. Who's the incompetent bastard on her? You better just ask him to clear fast.
you're still listening to this, you're probably a lot like me. If you've listened to the end of this, you and I are a lot alike, and I like you, and for that you shall be rewarded. Send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Podcrash with that Chris Gore, 5042 Wilshire Boulevard, PMB 1500, Los Angeles, California, 90036, and you will be rewarded with a Podcrash with that Chris Gore fan club kit. It's absolutely free if you send a self-addressed stamped envelope. If you send a self-addressed stamped envelope that includes more postage, I'll throw in a free DVD. Later. I have a surprise piece of audio that I think you're really going to like, and this is... Um, and I, I, I said I would, I would tell this story, and it involves Comic-Con. It was, uh, you might have seen pictures on Facebook, you might have seen pictures on Twitter, you might have seen them on Instagram. Graham Elwood, I don't know if he still has it, but Graham it Elwood, still up. I, I'm on his profile pic. The profile pic for Graham El, comedian Graham Elwood is me wearing a Slave Leia outfit, posing with Graham Elwood. I wore a Slave Leia outfit at Comic-Con. Why did I do this? There is a story behind this. So if you, we've done these panels before. We've done, uh, oh my God, I don't know how many Geek Girls Exist, OU Sexy Geek, and uh, Chris Gore is our honorary man, Leia. <laughs> Strip it, buddy. <laughs> I actually just want to make a serious statement for a minute. Last year I made some comments on this panel that upset and offended some of the people that were here, and I was here. I want to come here actually to apologize and say that I'm sorry to the people who were offended by my comments. I also want to say that there was a serious reason why I wanted to be on this panel last year, which is the fact that, like, I've been coming to Comic-Con for over 10 years, and I'm a father. A lot of people, some of you people know, a lot of people don't. I have a daughter who comes with me to Comic-Con every year. And when she was born, which, Anyone's actually seen a baby be born? It's not pretty like it is in the movies. It's like in the movie Alien, but with more blood. And for me, it was love at first sight. I'm holding my daughter, tears rolling down my eyes, and I'm just thinking to myself, I was joyful and at the same time angry because I thought she's going to be a second-class citizen. She's going to be treated differently in the workplace. She's going to be fucked with by dudes, and no one's going to fuck with my dog. <laughs> and that's when I really became a feminist, and that's why I feel like I had a rightful place on this panel. <laughs> Unfortunately, last year, I made a bunch of stupid jokes. But just to show you that I have a sense of humor, I still would like to put my penis inside every girl!